Welcome to the Hey Brownberry podcast, a virtual visit edition. Many thanks to my sponsors for this episode. This episode covers day two of the Woolen Festival of Yarn, including a very special interview with crochet artist Eva Nee. I've got secret Tim Tams from Shelley, which I'm sharing now. Only you. Only you. Only A bit of background on the designer you are about to meet. Irish designer Ava Nee was taught to crochet by her mam at around the age of 11. From her Ravelry designer page, here's what I learned about her. Coming from quiet farming land between two small towns in County Meath, she would often in the following years dip back into crochet to relieve rainy day boredom. And before long, was rarely to be seen without a hook behind her ear. After art college and several successful years as a graphic designer, the recession required a sudden change of direction and she began selling patterns online. She hasn't looked back since. Eva has been published many times in magazines, teaches very regularly in local yarn shops in Dublin, and is currently writing her second ebook of Tunisian lace shawl patterns entitled Legendary Shawls. Her personal designing motto, just because I can crochet it, doesn't mean I should. Just before chatting with Ava, I had the pleasure of watching her interact with some of her fans at her booth. Then we were fortunate to get a detailed description of Eva's new pattern, King Lear. Yeah, I do a triangle and I go, okay, how many of these do I need to make a half circle? And I just do that many, you know. But essentially every single segment, once again, as with uh, with uh, Fanula there, it works 
with an increase of oh, yeah, stitch height it. as you go oh, along. Yeah, I can see it, yeah. But you are binding off and carrying on, binding off, carrying on on this. Oh, so you, you right. use you use little pieces up to this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now there's a fabulous bind off technique that I found on Detroit Knox. If you find her on Instagram. I'm going to be doing a video on it. She's given me permission. But Detroit Knots, amazing crochet share over in the US. You absolutely have to follow her as well. She um she has this bind off that is just so smooth and neat. So I've used that with her permission and I'll be doing a video on that. So the bind offs are an absolute piece of cake as you go along. It's lovely the way it flows through. Thank you. Sort of and it's, really, really and it's really this stitch here, I don't know what to call that. I've called it a spine stitch because that's what it looks like to me. Um, I'm, I'm assuming somebody's already invented it and I'll change the name when I find out what they called the it. Name. But in the meantime, that, that's, I think the last video I've put up on Instagram so far is that technique and that texture. Right. And I'm loving it at the moment. I'm playing with it here at the stall. I'm doing some more shawls and things with it to see what I can get out and, of it. And you know? if you just add different colours, it's not as red as it is. Hi friends, <laughs> Mars here at Woolen Day 2, <sighs> yarn fumes, powerful, <laughs> that's not a complaint, I am loving my time here, I am loving the energy here, I'm loving the atmosphere, there's something very intimate about this festival, though it's not small by any means. I just feel that there are a lot of people here excited to see certain vendors, excited to see specific yarns, and excited to see each other. It's kind of cool to watch. I'm going to introduce you now to a new to me designer, Ava Nee. Ava is a crochet designer, an artist in my opinion, and I would love for you to see the beautiful designs she's created, and I want her to tell you a little bit about it. Many of you, like me, have been to other festivals where knitting is featured quite highly, maybe even spinning and the fiber arts, and I think crochet is coming up. I think it is growing, and people like Ava Nee are going to be part of that growth. So, here's Ava. So, introducing myself. Good Hi. morning. Hi, everybody. Please Hi. tell us who you are. So, my name is Ava Nee, and I'm a Tunisian crochet designer here in Ireland. Excellent. And so Ava, is this your first time at Woolen? It is my second time actually. Okay. I was here at the inaugural one last year, which was awesome. But this is so much bigger and so much better this year, so I'm thrilled to be here again this year. Excellent. Is this your first time as a vendor at Woolen? It is. I was a teacher last year. I was teaching my specific Tunisian crochet techniques last year at Woolen. And this year I've managed to get myself a booth. So I'm here and I'm doing demos twice a day as well. So I'm still doing a bit of the teaching Excellent. while also getting to just chat to everybody and see all of their crochet as they go past. I've told my viewers that I've been to a lot of festivals. I've seen the yarn and the fiber and different patterns, <laughs> but it's a lot of knitting. Have you done many festivals where you see a lot of crochet as well? Well, I'm seeing it a little bit more as time goes on, which is definitely the positive step to see. But I think it's only as a result of crocheters getting a bit open arms when it comes to seeing their crafts represented correctly and appropriately at things like this. I think having, having knit festivals like this, including other things, and saying a craft festival rather than a knitting or a yarn festival, I think it's a great idea. Um, but I do find still, even now, with the push for more crochet um, designers and more crochet styles and stuff, you still find that yarn shops don't have samples made up of their yarns or their hand dyes maybe in knitting and crochet and I think that's something that does need to change a little bit as well because crocheters need to see their own loves represented properly when, uh, when they're browsing around as well you know. It's an excellent perspective especially as a teacher and a designer. Mm. Do you hear from your students and those who buy your patterns that they feel the same? They would like to see that greater representation? Well, yeah, I think so, you know, and, and it's funny because the one thing I've heard repeatedly here at this stall as well, actually there's two things really, and they're both kind of interconnected. One thing is people will come in and they'll start asking me questions about my knitting. And then I have to kind of say, well, it's actually not knitting, but not be apologetic about it, but not belligerent. It's a hard line to kind of, you know, to have. But I have to explain that this is a particular type of crochet. So I'm introducing them to the idea that there's an entire booth here that's dedicated to a craft that they, you know, that they thought it was otherwise. 
But then secondly, on top of that, um, I do find that the people who do recognize it as crochet are thrilled to have a little oasis in the sea of other people's craft. They go, finally, I'm seeing some crochet. You know, it, it, a couple of years ago, it all looked so different and so samey. And it's lovely to see the kind of the innovations start to bloom in crochet now, you know, so it's, I don't know, I think I'm getting, I'm getting equal amounts of joy and confusion from hunters yes. as they pass, you know, yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's nice sense. that people are actually getting to see this kind of thing as well. You know, Fantastic. Well. Yeah. Is there a reason that you gravitate toward particular crochet stitches like Tunisian crochet? Sort of, yeah. Well, it, it all, actually, do you know what, there's a bit of a story on this. It all started years ago when I was the one complaining that there weren't, there wasn't any good crochet patterns out there. That absolutely everything I could see, at least from my perspective, was a, a doily or something a granny would wear, you know. And crochet was a big thing in the past in Ireland for old women, big crochet shawls and that kind of thing. So that perspective, I think, had aged a little bit. and. You could see that being the old ladies, the granny's craft was crochet, you know. And I, I was whining to some of my knitting friends while they were knitting their lace, ethereal, fabulous looking, just, oh, I don't know, angelic pieces of knitted lace. They were doing Luna moths and they were doing swallowtails. And there was one woman doing the, was it the Queen Susan? Isn't that the gigantic one? Yeah, one woman doing that. And I was just howling at them how, you know, you don't get that with crochet. And one of them sat me down and basically told me to shut up. I'm going to teach you how to knit lace. So she taught me so I would stop whining. But what happened was that because I was more um, more aware and more comfortable with crochet, was that the rules for the decreases in the yarn overs and knitting translated into Tunisian crochet for me almost immediately. And I kind of started ruminating on that. And that's where that came from. That's where, where this style came from, really. It was my friends getting annoyed with me, essentially. So like with that, I think um, that style is something I was, was yearning for all those years and in the end when nobody else did it I kind of had to do it myself essentially you know so I think that's yeah. brave and brilliant well, thank you and even as my viewers can see now with the samples around your booth that I've shared there are a lot of the same effects in the way the shapes flow in the way the stitch patterns stand out it sounds like there are enough connections between the two that a knitter could take up Tunisian crochet and not lose the things they love about a knitted shawl, for example. Are you finding that there is a need for learning more of these stitches and this particular stitch type? Well, yeah. Um, I, I would say definitely yes, yeah. but mostly because I have turned Tunisian crochet 90 degrees on its head. So instead of working, if anybody's familiar with Tunisian, instead of working in rows of stitches, I actually work in tall columns of stitches. So I've already altered it to suit a crochet sensibility a little bit like that. So as a result of that, um, early on, a lot of my testers were getting sick and tired of the fact that I was using traditional terms, but they no longer were appropriate. They no longer matched right. They weren't, they weren't gelling well in their heads. So I actually had to invent my own terms. So for, for the stuff I have here, it's, I mean, it's a very simple system, but it's unfamiliar because it is only a decade old at this stage. I've only started using it for about, it, about 10 years. So there is some learning to do, um, I think. And I, but do you know what the nice thing is though? Is that some of my early testers have since gone on to become designers in their own right and they're using those terms. So the beauty of it is that this thing has legs, you know? It genuinely does. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of cool if you were to visualize the crafting world as a tree. I've got a tiny little twig <laughs> off the Tunisian one, and those people now are little leaves, and they'll become twigs when they have a bit, and they've learned. I mean, it's wonderful, it's growing basically. It's what an fast. excellent metaphor yeah, for I growth. Love it. I love it. I'm what is it like for you to have someone come up to you and show you a project that they've made from one of your designs? It is eternally fantastic. I just get such a thrill out of seeing it. Because if one thing it means that somebody has actually managed to read my pattern, interpret it correctly, and do the whole thing, which is always a relief, I have to say. No matter how many testers and editors and time you spend focusing on a pattern, you're never quite sure if it's going to make sense in the real world. So every time you do, it's kind of like you're getting a little, uh, a little badge of, you know, little tick or something, like you know, a little gold star. But then secondly, I find that people's choices of what yarn to use, what hooks to use, what modifications to make 
are always thrilling to see as well because it means that the little bit of creativity I have that I put on paper has blossomed into something else for people as well. Absolutely. None of them ever look like the original and I think that is fantastic. You know, Everybody puts their own little creative touch on it. And it that's wonderful. Yeah. I agree. My focus for this virtual visit to Woolen is about the humans of Ravelry <laughs> and how we translate that online community into the real world. Mm. Say a little bit about what it's like to have this experience in person as someone who does provide a digital product by way of patterns and I'm sure does messaging back and forth online. Yeah. What is it like to translate that into an in-person, real-life experience? I'm, I'm on the spectrum myself, so I'm sort of seeing this from a perspective of somebody who's maybe not so good at socializing as other people so for me my day really is quite solo I'll get up I'll feed the dog I'll stick on Netflix and I'll crochet until it's lunchtime essentially my job itself is quite isolated I'm in a little bubble but the nice thing about things like this is that you get such an onslaught of other people's creativity and other people's ideas that you go away with your head buzzing with so many ideas you've got to have a notebook on you at all times just to and it, it's there's no copying it's just that's clever and it sort of goes in and ruminates for a while and then it pops out the other side to something entirely different, you know? And I've heard that from a few people as well. There, there's nothing but ideas in this room, you know? They may all be garment related ones, but you never know where that idea might come in handy, you know, that stitch pattern or that technique or who you might meet and talk to and who might inspire you to try something you haven't before, you know? So it's, it, is, it is food for the creative soul, I think, this kind of thing. And I, I'm having the best time, I have to say. I would agree, I yeah. would agree. Yeah. I have one last question yes. for you. For my viewers and those around the world who may not be here or may not be able to get here, why Woolen? Why Woolen? Oh my God, that's a, that's, you know what? For me, it is getting to see a, a, a local band of people. Uh, so with, the, with this local, um, Sens sensibility with their creativity really you know every area you go to is going to have a different idea of what what makes a shawl what makes a jumper the different tastes are going to come out you know so you've got an awful lot of lace here whereas in other places in the world perhaps you'll have more cabling or that kind of thing you know more color work that sort of thing so I think it's nice to be able to come here to see what all of us locals are at currently but then we also have this beautiful international flavor with people from the UK, from the US, we've got all over people. So you've got this, I don't know, this smorgasbord, I suppose, of creativity going on, you know. So why well in? For me, it's because it's up the road, but for everybody else traveling, <laughs> I suppose it's because you get that wonderful international and local flavor here. I'm so pleased I got the chance to meet you in person and Me thank too. you on behalf of my viewers for spending some time with us. Well, thank you very much for pointing a camera at me. <laughs> I will make sure that they have access to all of your social media and definitely feature some of your patterns. Thanks again. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to meet Ava and to go home with a pattern for some Tunisian crochet that I'd love to try myself to make this Phoenix shawl. Time to dive into my stash. Thanks for being here, friends. Just another short virtual visit to this amazing festival. More to come as I was so, so grateful to meet several other designers and attendees. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be notified when my next episode or vlog is available for you to watch. See you next time. Let me see. Hold that up for me. The, wonderful, wonderful. the volunteers here are second to none. Introduce yourself, darling. Hi, I'm Ashling. I'm one of the Woolen team. She is the best. Thank you so much. <laughs>